Hello again and welcome. I've had a request to show the sump layout in more detail, how the water enters, where it goes etc. I would name the particular commenter asking for this but I'm terribly sorry I would murder your name and for that I do apologise. So I've started just with a quick overview of the tank itself. Over to the right hand corner showing the overflow, this is where the inlet into the sump starts and at the moment it seems that the overflow, um, the way I've got it set up now, goes into the emergency overflow as well and that seems to be the quietest method um, of taking water out of the tank. Whenever I change the, uh, the valve at the back, which I've also tried to show, I can't actually get round there to my whole body round there so that I can actually see what I'm shooting, but you see the great big Red Sea valve there to adjust this. If I do adjust this to allow more water to go down the actual outflow itself into the tank sump, then it does end up gurgling a little bit and it... it just doesn't seem to work quite well for me I, I will get it right but when I do get it right I need to do a water change and the whole thing changes again so this time around I did the water change and it's found its way just to just trickling to the overflow now majestic aquariums in Australia say that this is the actual best setting for the tank and as things stand at the moment I have to say that I do agree with the gentleman I've got great respect for his videos going from the top right hand corner down into the sump there are three pipes at the end of the day two going down which is the main inlet the emergency overflow which is being used just slightly at the moment and then of course the return from there it goes into a bubble trap up over the bubble trap into two filter socks which i've also got some additional um <laughs> wadding in there to help with the filtration and I, I must say the the wadding I'm using is absolutely fantastic it does get a lot of filth out it really does get a lot of filth out so into the two filter socks uh, through the socks and out through the bottom into the Red Sea Reefer skimmer chamber where you can see the Red Sea skimmer uh, really doing its job the amount of skim in there at the moment, as you can see, is 24 hours worth because I do change or take the water out every day and I clean the cup out twice a week. From there it goes both two ways, it carries on over to the left into what I have as the refugium, where I have two pieces of Chetamorpha. They haven't grown in size so much, has gone very, very, very dark, but there again they've been trying to compete with when I've been cycling the tank, all of the algae in the tank and everything else. So th the algae in the tank is going down and uh, I'm really quite pleased with what's happening in that sump. So we have the water into the sump, into the socks, into the filter of the uh, Red Sea Reefer skimmer chamber, and then two ways into the what I'm using as a refugium but can also be used for other things other uh, elements if you have algae scrubbers and other so on and so forth can go in there but I've not chosen that route and it also comes straight forward to the um, activated carbon bags there are three bags there they've all been supplied as standard with this system from Red Sea and I've also put a bit of wadding underneath there to try and make a bubble trap for the Red Sea Reefer micro bubbles that come out um, I mean, I like bubble scrubbing, but seeing them 24-7 is a bit annoying, but that's life. Um, they are there. Even through that, they get through. Only a small amount, but they are there. Uh, the other thing with the Red Sea Reefer on the odd occasion, as you probably see, I, I tip it back a little bit on the odd occasion because it does get an awful lot of air underneath it as well. Not a problem, it's just I tip it back to get rid of it. So then from there, it goes through the activated carbon, down through that area underneath where you can see it's completely blank and then straight into the return chamber where as you can see the inlet for the return chamber is at the front and I've also got my two air bubble stones there they're wooden blocks and they're the ones that give me the micro bubbling or small bubbles I can't say the micro bubbles but they are pretty darn small um, where I do micro um, I saw a bubble scrub twice a day and also in that chamber you can see the float and that float 
is the uh, a float for the um, auto top off which is at the back of the tank it doesn't sit in the sump it is part of the actual main tank itself at the bottom behind the chamber there's a you've got your main tank and then behind the tank half of it effectively is the return pumps and the overflow and below that virtually the whole length of the tank is the uh, auto top off so you fill that up from the top left hand corner and that then runs down into the return pump chamber via control of that little white knob there to uh, effectively one drip per second and it does work um, it hasn't clogged i'm pretty careful that i don't put any gunge in the rodi water that goes in there in the first place but you do get specks of dust it's impossible not to all the odd hairy arm bit goes in um, but so far it hasn't clogged it's worked very 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 well indeed i'm very very pleased with that and that was one of the reasons um, that I really wanted this system, one of several reasons that it, the auto top-off was not in the sump itself. It was clean, clear and out of the way and it is working very, very well for me. So there we go. The Haley uh, chiller is working very well. My goodness, it does not pump out some heat when it's working. So uh, I do have to try and keep opening the doors in this conservatory just to get the heat out because the the uh, chiller itself when it's working will pump air out at 49 degrees C and it does get hot and the um, aluminium frame gets pretty hot as well. Can't avoid it but it's not doing any damage or anything like that at all but it sits there. I've now reduced the temperature again from 27 down to 26. I didn't want to um, drop the tank temperature down too quickly so I left it a few days and then dropped it by one more degree to 26 degrees C. It gets to 27 the chiller kicks in and drops it down to 25.9 and turns off and then there is latent heat in the rocks at the moment because of the summer and then it, it tends to go up relatively quickly the water temperature and then the chiller will kick in about half an hour to an hour later and bring it down again only comes on about two to three times of the day at the moment and that's toward the end of the day when a lot of the sun is on the conservatory even though i have all the blinds down that's life but it is working it's working well if you have stayed with me this far thank you and i'll see you on the next one